closing, I have to try my best. Anyway, so I will have to rush uh, through the slides, uh, and uh, I will also give a cracks of the work that we have been doing at the University of Kashmir. And uh, so uh, the melting third force, the driving forces, and the geopolitical consequences, I will talk one slide at the end that is very important for, because the theme of the conference is geopolitics. Now, I, I will just uh, share some of my thoughts, which uh, you know many of our speakers for the last two days have been talking. The indicators of climate change are quite clear and loud in the upper Indus Basin, I mean in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. And uh, the implications of the depleting cross sphere under changing climate on water, energy, and food security have far reaching geopolitical consequences. And uh, as per our estimates in the upper Indus Basin, I mean in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, we have lost about 20% of the glacial mass in during the last six decades. And more important, you know, observation that we are finding that there's a shift in the stream flows peak. We use it to get maximum flow during the summers. Now we are getting the maximum stream flows as I will show you some of the, even from the entire, you know, western three rivers, the, stream flow is shifting, we are getting more waters during the spring. And uh, that, that is a very important, you know, consideration for the policy and decision makers, because the waters from that region are governed by a treaty called the Indus Water Treaty. And uh, I believe that we, many of us have been talking that the water issues, if not, you know, uh, basically, you know, understood in right perspective, will have a implications on the South Asian security. We already, you know, if we look at the India and Pakistan particularly, already water has entered into official discourse between India and Pakistan and, you know, the two foreign ministries are talking on the water. And uh, some of the challenges that we are addressing at the University of Kashmir because uh, Krasphere Research is a very active trust area of research at the University of Kashmir. How much water is stored in the, you know, in the Indus Sphere or in the state of Jammu and Kashmir? Now, if you look at the current estimates that we have, they vary by magnitude. The methods that we have, I mean, if a policymaker at Delhi wants to know how much water is there stored on the glaciers, I think none of us has a very, you know, direct answer to that. And how heterogeneous is the Indian Himalayan system? Region. In the, in the state of Jammu and Kashmir itself, you will see that the glaciers are behaving very differently in different ranges. So it is very, it is not that it is Eastern Himalaya, Central Himalaya and Northwestern Himalaya. Even within the Northwestern Himalayas, there is a large variability as far as the glacier response is concerned. And we have observed, you know, have we, you know, the, some people say that, you know, the, 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 you know, the, the peak due to the melting of the glaciers. Have we already reached the you know, tipping point of the gla maximum glacial melt? I believe that if you look at the discharge, stream flow discharge from the Western Himalayas, that has already been reached in 90s. So since 90s, we are seeing a significant, almost 30% decline in the stream flow. So that peak has, while in the Alps, people still discuss that they, it will come by 2025 or later. I think probably as per our research, that peak has already been there. Uh, and how important are the glaciers for the stream flow? If all the glaciers melt, you know, we, we sometimes make, you know, get, get confused here. So the, the, it, it is very important on the basis of our stream flow partitioning that we have done, how much is the contribution of ice? How much is the contribution of snow and the rain into it? I think we need to be very clear. Of course, it's a function of time. It is a function of uh, space. It varies from re uh, region to region. But in, uh, let us say in Kashmir Valley, we have found that this glacial melt is just about 6% of the total, you know, on an av average. But if you go to the Karakaram or go to the Indus, uh, upper Indus, so you can... And another important factor, you know, that we need to see, think vis-a-vis -vis the climate change. How important is the black arm? So I tell you, in the, in the Kashmir Valley, when, you know, uh, Dr. Gudjani was talking and few, few, few others also, if you look at the you know, the Peer Panchal Range. Peer Panchal Range, there is the maximum glacier recession. And the warming in that is very high. 
So what is the influence of the black carbon? In the, if you look on the southern side and on the eastern side, there are huge populations that are burning the biomass there. So and you will be surprised that the black carbon concentration in Kashmir is as bad as Calcutta. People think that Kashmir is very pristine here and all that. So I published a paper in the atmospheric environment where I showed that among all the Himalayan high stations, Kashmir has the highest black carbon. So the, ex, the, the enhanced made of melting we see in the Peer Panchal or in the Kashmir Himalayas, is it has, how much is the contribution from the black carbon? So I will be just really now rushing through the... So you, we have, you know, in the state of Jammu and Kashmir, we have more than 8,000 glaciers. So uh, very, and some of the glaciers are as big as 60 kilometers in one dimension, the uh, Sachin Glacier. So you have quite, a, and if you look at the, you know, estimates, so, uh, and how many of them have been studied, you know? And somebody yesterday was saying a score of them in the entire Indian Himalayas. But if you look into the Indian side and Pakistani side of the Indus, not more than 20 glaciers have been studied. And these are the glaciers that have been studied using remote sensing and all field, but on the basis of field observations, not more than a score of them. And the methods that we use normally, the area scaling methods or the slow based methods, you know, put to estimate the volume of these glaciers and look at the estimates. So if you use one of these methods, you can have 20, 2330 gigatons or you, you can end up with 65,000 gigatons. So there's a large variability as far as the, you know, the total amount of uh, glacial mass that is stored in the in Indian Himalayas. And uh, on what basis do we do? We have the few of the, you know, inventories. We have AC mode inventory. We have RGI inventory. We have the, you know, our own inventory here, the uh, ISRO inventory. I think even, even, the, even the numbers you can see, you can, this is one of the glaciers here, Kolahai Glacier. This is in our database now, you can see, this is one glacier system, so you can see some inventory shows it at seven, seven, eight glaciers and here also. So, because the, even the area, there is a change in the area. Numbers definitely significantly vary on number of glaciers in these inventories. But as far as the area is also concerned, you can see that area is also changing here. Area is also between, in one of the basins, this is the, uh, the Chenab Basin, Suru Basin and Jahilim Basin. So you can see, so which of these inventories you will use to, you know, uh, estimate the mass in that, so that also varies. On the, in, in, the, in the Kashmir Himalayas, we have been, you know, working on different, uh, they just publish it and work. And you can see here, you know, this is what uh, Gutiani was also talking about. If you look at the land surface temperature on an average, if you look at the temperature from 1st of November up to the 30th of April, the winter temperatures in the Karakaram are minus 18 degrees centigrade. So those, you know, uh, extreme low temperatures sustain those, you know, glaciers. While as in case of the uh, Pirpanchal or the Greater Himalayan temperatures are quite warm, and that is one reason that uh, we are seeing high rates of recessions there. And we really, we, we have 11 stations in the entire state of Juman Kashmir where we have long-term data. So we really don't know what is happening up on the mountains. We don't have access. Now, if we look at the snow cover, so it is showing a consistently, you know, almost no trend. So you can look at this land surface. So this is, uh, now some of these glaciers, so you can look at the mass thickness, mass change. This is from the ice set. So, so the Ramanathan was saying, I was very surprised, you know, I had not seen that paper. While it shows the tree ring based estimates, he showed one slide, while he showed Jammu and Kashmir almost a bit increasing mass trend. So no, if we look on... Negative, but not that. No, it, I mean, when I was looking at that, you know, it was just an increasing mass. Anyway, even if it is, but if we, if we look at it, you know, so that is not your paper. I, I suppose that was some uh, other paper. Not anyway, paper. Yeah. So... So, but if you look on the ground, you know, we have, we have seven, you know, benchmark glaciers where we are doing the field-based mass balance, GPR, we have, you know, geodetic mass balance. And you can look, these are some uh, seven glaciers, you can look at this. This is one glacier and uh, where we are monitoring the snout. On all these, you know, glaciers, we have, we have almost uh, about 21 glaciers where we have been doing the mass snout mapping. Yeah. So this is the Kolhai Glacier. So on an average, the glaciers in the Kashmir Himalaya are changing, you know, except to the Karakaram are just receding by almost 18 to 20 meters. 
Now this is one of the glaciers of the one of these Weidmar glaciers. So you can see the mass losses on an average. Yeah. So almost a meter of water equivalent we are losing every year in the and that is a scenario over the entire Kashmir Valley. When I say Kashmir Valley, it is one of the you know Jhelum Basin where why. So the, the data, I mean the Ramanathan showed almost no changes, but on I, I will say you that I have four benchmark glaciers where we have been uh, you know, field basin mass changes, it is on an average one meter of water equivalent we are seeing. So you can see the ice data also, almost similar type of, and uh, this, you know, the implications on, the, uh, yesterday I was talking about this in, you know, when Krishnan was saying that there will be an increase uh, from the modeling results increase in the snowfall. So we have from the observations, you know, there's a significant decrease in the snow and corresponding increase in the rain. So over the, if you look at the data, observed data over the uh, Jumma and Kashmir, there is not any change in the precipitation. There's a slight increase, but it is not significant. But but what is changing the form of precipitation is changing in the lower elevation. Significantly, it is changing, and that has a that has a, you know tremendous implications. And you, if you look at the discharge from the oh, entire Jammu and Kashmir, the three rivers, the Chenab, Indus, and that you can see since I was this is what I was saying that there's a 30 percent decrease since mid of 90s here, and it is shown by the individual. Uh, observations also here and uh, and also it is observed here and how much is the you know ice melt or how much is the snow melt ice melt rainfall here you can look at the jalim almost six percent we have from the glacial melt but snow melt is quite significant you know almost 55 percent so on an average if you look at the estimates you know empirical empirically worked out the indus has 85 percent from the snow and ice and uh, you can see the Jhelum has 65 and all this. So quite a significant here, but from the snow, snow melt. Ice melt is correspondingly less. So this is what is happening. This is from the observed data from 1970. We have the, the peak discharge we used to have in summer. Now it is equally you have a lot of discharge in the spring. Or in some cases the spring and discharge and summer discharge is same. So, uh, we need water in the, you know, in the, in the, in the Jammu and Kashmir, we need water in the summer. Because uh, we don't need it in April or May. We need it in June, July, August. And if we look at the, you know, modeling scenarios, now this is the observed here and under RCP 2.5, you can see that, you know, so the, by mid of century, we, the stream flow peak is shifting here. So you can see that we will have discharge, maximum discharge in the month of April. And we don't have in the state of Jammu and Kashmir even a capacity to store one liter of water. So we don't have the storage capability unless and until we rise to that age and, and uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so this, this is what I was talking. If you look at the black carbon concentration in Kashmir Valley, highest among all the published work that is here, you know. So very high, and, and uh, you know, the sources are mainly from the Central Asia. So India and Pakistan at wars over the share, at wars over sharing of, you know, we know last year, you know, after the UDI attack, even, uh, the, you know, we threatened that we will abrogate. And I, I wrote a couple of pieces on that, that why abrogation of Indus Water Treaty is not in India's favor or standing by the Indus Water Treaty is in India's best interest. So uh, I think already, you know, the, it has, you know, uh, the, the mis I will say the misconcepts, you know, downstream there. In, in Pakistan, from Hafiz Sayyid up to the President Zardari has spoken about the water. You know, the, the religious, you know, the, and the nationalistic, you know, discourses on this, I think, are going to complicate it. Yeah, so so what are the consequences? I mean, if you look at the Indus Water Treaty, it is blind about the uh, climate change. So there's, if you look at the you know, search on the treaty, there is no word on climate change. So they, they you know, the people who developed the Indus Water Treaty, negotiated the Indus Water Treaty, at that time didn't have, you know, so this is the last slide, okay? So, so this, they, they didn't, uh, you know, think about the climate change. And we know that there is a 30% significant decline in the stream flow since 1960. 
and uh, yeah, changes in the hydrograph. The peak is shifting. That uh, that also will have you know certain kind. The voices for the groundwater treaty. You know, already Dr. Tiwari showed a very significant depletion of the groundwater in the you know. So in both parts, both parts of the basin, Indus Basin on the on the Pakistan side and India side, there is excessive withdrawal of the groundwater. I think there is already a religious and nationalistic posture, posturing need for water storages, you know, and flood infrastructure. We we know that because of the lack of infrastructure, we are going to suffer. Data sharing, telemetry, and joint studies, you know, need to be encouraged so that there is confidence. And I believe that science should go guide the policy and water sharing diplomacy. Thank you very much for your attention.